right, so this morning I'm gonna show you guys how to make what I like to call peach cobbler oatmeal. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract and a little bit of this cinnamon. And then just mix that up. And I'm just gonna add a banana. And it's peach season, so this is one of my favorite ways to have oatmeal in the summer. And then I always like to add a little flaxseed to my oatmeal for those omega-3s. I did not do this during weight loss, but now on the other end, I don't think that a little flaxseed will hurt your weight loss at all, but that's up to you. And my greens are done, so I'm just going to put them on my plate here. Now, if you've never tried steamed Swiss chard, it's really good. It's almost sweet on its own, but I'm gonna top it off with a little peach balsamic vinegar, and I will link this in the description box for you guys, along with a discount code. everybody and welcome back to my channel my name is Kiki it's another meals for maximum weight loss video if you're just joining me this is a series where I'm showing you guys the types of whole food plant-based meals that I ate to lose almost 70 pounds and keep it off remember you can find me on Instagram at plentiful Kiki I'm constantly sharing more food and lifestyle inspiration there as well I'm always posting to my stories to show you guys my daily meals as well as all of our adventures and gardening all that stuff so make sure you check me out there. And my cookbook is finally done. It's been an extreme amount of work, but it's all finished. Um, my ebook will be available for purchase on my website next week. So keep an eye on my website. I'll also be announcing it on my other social media. And then shortly after that, we will be open for pre-order for the physical book. So stay tuned for all of that. So thank you so much to all of you guys. You've all been so supportive and you guys have made this whole journey journey so much fun. All right, so today I'm going to be going over a couple of the key points to achieve weight loss on a plant-based diet, and I'm going to be answering your questions about fats in my diet because I've been getting a lot of questions about that, so we're going to talk about that later. All right, so breakfast, as you saw, it's this peach cobbler oatmeal. I love peaches this time of year, especially since they're now ripening and coming into season. And then I've got Swiss chard from the garden, which is really exciting. If you haven't tried Swiss chard, it's really good when you steam it. It's almost Almost kind of sweet it's extremely nutrient dense and then with that peach balsamic drizzle on top it's amazing all right so I'm gonna eat my breakfast and then we'll get going all right guys so I just wanted to go over a few points that are gonna be extremely crucial for you to be able to achieve weight loss on a plant-based diet especially for those of you that are new to my channel or have been struggling to lose weight on your plant-based diet these couple key factors are gonna be extremely important for that Okay, so the first thing that's gonna be really important is to consume as whole food a plant-based diet as possible. So you really wanna reduce processed foods like crackers, cereals, breads, baked goods, things like that, and to really focus on whole foods the way that they're grown in nature and to consume them in that state. Instead of having cold cereals for breakfast, you wanna to try to have whole grain cereals like oatmeal, quinoa, amaranth, things like that. And part of that is gonna be cutting out oil completely. Oil is an extremely refined food. It's extremely high in fat and calories and has little to no nutritional value. So it's a really good idea, especially for weight loss, to completely cut out oil. The other thing that's gonna be really helpful for you to achieve weight loss on a plant-based diet is gonna be consuming lots of non-starchy vegetables. So I followed Dr. McDougall's example in his book, The McDougall Program for Maximum Weight Loss. He outlines the 50-50 plate where you fill half your plate with non-starchy veggies and then the other half with starchy veggies. So what you're doing is you're really bulking up your meals with lower calorie foods and filling up on those and then moving on to your starchy vegetables, which are higher in calories. And then together, those foods are so full of fiber and nutrients and water that you stay satiated and full for a lot less calories. 
The other thing that's going to be really important is to keep your diet low in fat. Now these doctors all talk at length about the importance of a low fat diet. Um, that doesn't mean fat free, like everything, every vegetable, green, every grain, everything has little amounts of fat in it that we need. And then of course there are things like nuts and seeds and avocados that are also really good sources of healthy fats. But for the purpose of weight loss, it is important to keep a close eye on those. It's a really good idea if you're having trouble losing weight and are still consuming things like nut butters and lots of nuts, then it is gonna be a good idea, I'm sorry to say it, but to cut out the peanut butter, I know we all love peanut butter, but to cut that out of your diet just while you're trying to lose weight. You also don't wanna be snacking on like bowlfuls of nuts because they're so high in calories. It can really be either causing you to gain weight or keeping you from losing weight. Instead, you wanna you know, have a couple nuts. You can chop those up and sprinkle them over your oatmeal or over your salad and enjoy nuts that way. Or you can cut them out completely for the time being when you're trying to lose weight, which is what I did personally. But I will talk about fats in my diet later in this video and I'll go over kind of my thoughts on leaving those things in your diet during weight loss. But again, it is a good idea to cut out nut butters if you're trying to lose weight and maybe cut back on the avocado. Like I had a major avocado problem. I was consuming like a whole avocado a day, which is a lot. And I still consume avocado most days, but nowhere near that amount. So, so really it's those three things. If you stick to a whole food plant-based diet and cut out oil, that's gonna be one of the biggest things you can do. The next thing to do is gonna be to make sure you're eating lots of non-starchy vegetables. Make sure at least half your plate is full of non-starchy vegetables and eat those first so that you're filling up on the lowest calorie dense foods and then move to your higher calorie foods. And when you go to have seconds or thirds, just continue to serve yourself the same way. And three, you really wanna cut back on the fats if you're having trouble losing weight and reduce them to a point that it's not gonna impact your weight loss or cut them out for the time being. Snacking is another area where people struggle a lot. During weight loss, it's gonna be a good idea to snack on things like vegetables with a little oil-free hummus and fruit and not snack on things like crackers and chips and breads because those things really add up in calories very, very quickly. So sometimes people do really good with their meals, but then they fall apart when they have a snack. And so being consistent with good snacking is gonna be really important for weight loss. All right guys, so for lunch today, I'm gonna make what I like to call a green goodness bowl. So I've got a bunch of greens from the garden in this bowl and I've put some shredded cabbage in, some green onions and some cilantro. So to that, I'm gonna add some rice. Now this is brown rice and white rice mixed together. Like we seem to tolerate that much better than we tolerate brown rice. And by tolerate, I mean like. So we like rice when it's mixed or if it's all white rice, but not all brown rice. So so I mix it half and half and then just cook it up. All right, so now I'm gonna add a cucumber. And then I am gonna add some avocado today. So this is a smaller avocado. It fits into the palm of my hand and I'm only gonna have half of it. And then I'm gonna put some mango in it. I have some of these gorgeous sprouts. I'm gonna throw some of those on there too. So then to season this, it's really simple. I just like this seasoned, I don't know if you guys can see it, this seasoned rice vinegar. And I'll just drizzle some of this on top. And then I'll put a little low sodium soy sauce on as well. And that's it. All right guys, so 
here's the enormous bowl. Remember, it's mostly lettuce, but I know like it's a lot, but you guys know that I eat a lot, so I will eat all of this, I'm sure. But there it is, isn't that gorgeous? I'm really hungry. I'm gonna eat it with chopsticks today because it's just more fun that way. All right, I'm like literally sitting on the floor in my bedroom where hopefully it will be quiet for a few minutes so I can talk to you guys about fats. All right, so fats in my diet. You guys have been asking me, you know, how did I reintroduce them? How much fat do I eat? Can you lose weight and still eat things like nuts and seeds and avocados and have some flaxseed? Okay, so when I did maximum weight loss, I did completely cut out all overt fats. I didn't have any nuts or seeds, no nut butters, absolutely no oils and I cut out avocados as well and I have since reintroduced those I've been I reintroduced them like almost a year ago and my weight has done great um, I haven't had trouble with weight gain and to answer the question of how much fats I eat I eat a quarter to a half an avocado almost every day and I have one ounce of nuts a day and I do have one tablespoon of flaxseed a day now I don't go above the one ounce of nuts per day just because I am concerned <laughs> about gaining weight and it can be a really slippery slope but dr. Neil Barnard as well as dr. Fern both recommend about one ounce of nuts a day for females for their health benefits. Um, Dr. Barnard and Dr. McDougall and Dr. Gregor have all talked about the health benefits of ground flaxseed. So I do incorporate that in my diet daily. It's really good for female hormonal health and it's a great source of omega-3s. But other than that, I don't eat high fat foods. I will once in a while, you know, splurge when we're going out to dinner or holidays you know, and have something that has a little bit of oil in it, but like oil is just so bad for you that I just try to avoid it as much as possible. So even on holidays and birthdays, like I try to make treats and things that don't have oil, but maybe richer in nuts and things like that. You know, I put nuts in my cheese sauce and I've had zero trouble losing or maintaining weight eating that because it's so diluted. It's literally just like a half a cup of cashews in that big blender full of potatoes and carrots and water and other seasonings. But I definitely stay away from oil and I don't overdo it on the avocado because I do, my face does start to break out. Um, so again, I have one tablespoon of ground flaxseed on my oatmeal every day. I measure out one ounce of nuts for the day and sometimes I eat them all and sometimes I completely forget and don't eat any of them. Um, I like the nuts I focus on are uh, one Brazil nut because that's really good for thyroid health. So I have a Brazil nut every day, but then I like to focus on a few walnuts and some pumpkin seeds for the different nutrients that they're high in. But like I said, some days I get around to eating them, some days I forget and whatever. It's just, but I try to <laughs> measure them out and eat them. And then I love avocados. So like I said, I have about a quarter to a half of a small avocado a day, not like the huge ones that would be too much, but of like the smaller avocados that fit in the palm of my hand, I'll have quarter to half of that with my meal if I feel like it. So now to answer the question, you know, can you lose weight and still eat some nuts and seeds and avocado? I think you can. So now on the other side of weight loss, I, really think that not being able to lose weight has way more to do with eating processed foods and having nut butters. But you know, half to one ounce of nuts and seeds a day and a little flax seed a day and a little avocado, I don't think is where the problem is. So now on this side of weight loss and now that I really understand calorie density, I think you can totally lose all the weight you want to lose and still have a little bit of those things. I know some of you have expressed concerns about doing maximum weight loss because you don't want to cut out fats completely because you want to get the omega-3s and get the healthy fats and you don't want to cut out those nutrients and I totally understand that and I think you can continue to incorporate them, just reduce them. If you keep a really close eye 
on not consuming refined things like crackers and stuff like that and you really stick to a very simple whole food plant-based diet where you're eating lots of non-starchy vegetables and using the 50-50 plate then I don't think you know a teaspoon or two of flaxseed is going to derail your weight loss nor do I think that a quarter of an avocado is going to derail your weight loss either you know if you want to keep those things in your diet but you're afraid you're not going to lose weight then just reduce them still get the flaxseed every day but don't have a tablespoon have a teaspoon don't do an ounce of nuts and seeds do half an ounce and don't do half an avocado do a quarter of an avocado if you want some and then just see how your body does but dr barnard and dr mcdougall do say that there's absolutely no problem with cutting those things out during weight loss if you're having trouble losing weight so it's really all personal choice i personally am more comfortable with having flaxseed in my life and avocado just enhances my overall sense of happiness because <laughs> i love avocado but yeah it's it's up to you give it a try i think the problem we get into problems when we overdo it when we're snacking on nuts by the handfuls when we're putting nut butters on bread and just bumping up the calories of the things we're eating but if we're eating a very simple whole food plant-based diet that is still low in fat and you're using the 50 50 plate you know and making sure you're eating lots of non-starchy vegetables with your meals then you should do really well so if having a little bit of avocado on your soup or on your burrito bowl really makes it so that you can stick with eating well then do that you know make yourself comfortable you know it's those little things can really increase the overall satisfaction and joy we have when eating Okay guys, so for dinner, I'm gonna show you guys how to make this really easy curry fritter. Um, all I did was take some shredded hash browns. I just found them at Walmart. They don't have any oil on them. You could of course boil and shred your own potatoes, but why would you want to? So I just let them sit in the fridge overnight so that they would defrost and then I put them in a strainer and squeezed all the water out. And then I shredded a zucchini from the garden and squeezed the excess water out and I also shredded a small onion. So I'm just gonna add that to the potatoes and mix it up. All right, now to season this, I'm just gonna use some garlic salt. If you are salt free, then just use some garlic powder. But if you're gonna use garlic salt, don't add too much because when these cook down, it can get really salty really fast so it's probably a better idea just to add salt at the end and then all i'm going to do is add some yellow curry powder and a little bit of garam masala you can just do this to taste my kids are weenies about things being too spicy so i have to go light on the curry All right, so that's nice and mixed in. So I'm just gonna take the basket to my air fryer and I'm gonna make patties and put them in the air fryer. You can also do this in the oven, but if you're gonna do it in the oven, I would make them flatter just so that they get crispier for you. See, I'm just gonna make these little patties. All right, I'm gonna pop these in the air fryer and then I will make some to put in the oven so you guys can see how they both come out. All right, so I'm gonna put them in my dirty air fryer. I wish I cared enough to clean it before showing you guys, but I don't. All right, and I'm gonna cook them on 400 for about 30 minutes and then I'll check them. All right, so for a non-starchy vegetable, I'm gonna make this really amazing roasted cauliflower. My friend told me how to do this and it has changed my life. I did not enjoy cauliflower before this recipe. So first I'm just gonna chop the cauliflower up. All right, so we like it chopped into smaller bite-sized pieces. It also helps them get nice and crispy. All right, so now that it's all chopped, I'm gonna put it on a parchment lined baking sheet and then I'm gonna show you guys how to season it. All right, so now it's on a parchment lined baking sheet so that it doesn't stick. And because I washed the cauliflower, it's wet to help the seasoning stick. So you can, if yours is dry, then you can wet it with a little water or some veggie stock. All right, so I'm gonna put on a little garlic salt. Again, you can just use garlic powder if you are salt free. And then I'm gonna take a little turmeric and sprinkle that on. 
And then caraway seeds. This adds like a really fragrant layer to this. I love this. All right, so now I'm just gonna mix it up. All right, and then I'm gonna roast it on 425 for probably 20 to 30 minutes or until everything is starting to brown and crisp up. All right, those look good. They're nice and crispy. All right, guys, so these are the ones that I did in the air fryer. They're nice and crispy. And then these are the ones in the oven. So you can see you don't have to do them in the air fryer. You can do them in the oven. And I just made sure I did them thin so that they got nice and crispy. Whereas these guys are a lot thicker. All right, guys, there's dinner. It is absolutely gorgeous. And we like to dip them in ketchup. And I don't use any fancy ketchup. I don't use sugar-free ketchup. I just buy the organic Heinz, which is our favorite. So this is really filling. And as you saw, it's really easy. The cauliflower, make sure you give it a try. It is so tasty. All right, I'm gonna eat my dinner. All right, guys, so today for dessert, I'm gonna have a watermelon lime popsicle. These are so easy. All I did was take some watermelon, I put it in the blender and squeezed a lime in there. You can even put some lime zest in it. I sometimes do that. And then put them in popsicle molds. This is, I have like one random one. But these are really cool. These are just some silicone popsicle molds. You just drop them in there, pour it in there, and then put this lid on and then put the popsicle sticks to it and then just pop it in the freezer. I just got these on Amazon. I will link them for you if I can find some again. This is really good. It's a really fun way to have something sweet and cold on these hot summer days. All right, guys, so that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed seeing my meals for the day. Remember to keep meals simple and keep this journey about health and not just about the skinny. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.